Now we're ready for the layout. Using the job drawing, you paint excavation lines six to eight inches from the edge of the project. For a curve or a radius, use a stake and a tape measure to mark it. Then measure out another foot and position stakes to help find elevation and grade. The stakes are placed that far out so they won't be disturbed when you excavate. Uh, I would suggest maybe the foreman needs to know here. what the choice was so he can lay out the job properly. Once a job is laid out, you're ready to excavate. First, you run string lines from the grade sticks and then measure down for elevation. You always measure down from where the finished grade will be. Since this job is a redo, we'll use the existing elevation. For new construction, the finished grade can be measured from a hard permanent surface like a doorway or a building foundation. When you measure down, you allow for three and one eighth inches for eight centimeter pavers, or two and three eighths inch for six centimeter pavers. Then you allow three quarter inch or two centimeters for the bedding sand after it's compacted. These measurements indicate where the surface of the finished base layer should be. Start excavating smaller, more difficult areas like narrow paths, corners, and etc. so they don't slow down the process later. In this area, asphalt can be recycled and there's no charge to dump it at the recycling site. On this job, when you're removing dirt and asphalt, skim off the asphalt and load it separately from the dirt. The excavation needs to be deep enough for the compacted base, the bedding sand, and the concrete pavers. You want to make sure that you excavate precisely according to the plan and grade. An under-excavated project will not provide a strong enough pavement. And if you over-excavate, you'll be hauling out more material and installing more material than was estimated. This ends up costing a lot and slowing down the project. You want the subgrade to be uniform, so the finished product will be flat. On a 10-inch or 255 millimeter base like this one, you can be off an inch and still be okay. On a minimum base, say, four inches, an inch makes a big difference, but a half inch would be okay. You also want the excavation to have enough slope to provide for good water drainage. This sidewalk will tilt down and away from the house, so this planter bed will drain over. You should have a 2% grade from the garage down to the street. Since your objective is to drain water from the pavement as fast as it is practical, it's usually better to drain off to the side than down the length of the driveway. Remember that the subgrade surface should reflect the grade of the finished elevation. This side parking area will also drain towards the street. Make sure the subgrade is at the proper depth and to grade. You can check depth with a measuring tape and string lines or stake. Fill in with soil or base material as needed. Here's a tip. If you've dug too deep in clay soil, like more than four inches or 100 millimeters deep, don't try to fill in with more soil. It's too difficult to compact that much loose clay soil. Fill in with base material to bring it up to grade. You can determine the grade by measuring with an optical transit or laser level. Where the driveway meets the street, draw a straight line at the edge or a couple of inches into the street. Then measure down the straight edges of the driveway and figure the curves at the end to mark the endpoints of this line. Then saw along the line. Now you want to make sure you don't overcut this line. The city won't be too happy about it and it could cost the company money.